Hey everybody, welcome back to the Huffman House. So today we're getting our soil ready to plant some potatoes. So what we do is we mix up a five gallon bucket of our compost. We mix up a five gallon bucket of vermiculite, half vermiculite, half perlite, and then a five gallon bucket of peat moss for our potato soil. We throw in some rock phosphate, some bone meal, a little bit of uh, agricultural lime, dolomitic lime, and that's it. So, scooper. Uh, we've tried different soil combinations before and this is the one that uh, we've come to realize has worked really well for us. Yeah. We grow them in, what are they, one gallon? No, five, three gallon. Three gallon? We grow them in three gallon uh, smart pots. Uh, we make it so it's easy for us if we decide to have potatoes for dinner. We just come grab a pot of potatoes, harvest them out. Throw them in the kitchen sink. Good to go. Yeah. And we like the small potatoes. Um, therefore, this works really well for us. Uh, it's just don't, a, don't breathe that. two of us, so, you know, we don't need really... We're not into baked potatoes, really. We really kind of yep. just like the small potatoes that we can throw into anything. Mm -hmm. Or fry up, boil, however, you know. Scissors. Scissors are over there. Y'all ever have that problem where sometimes you get it just right and it undoes itself and other times you cannot get it to open up for nothing? Let's try this side. No. I don't want to work for you today. Oh, when in doubt? <laughs> just cut it. So here you put the uh, five gallons of compost into our wheelbarrow here. He has a five gallon bucket over there that he's putting half vermiculite and half, uh, what's it called? Perlite. Perlite, yeah. And then we'll dump that into the wheelbarrow. Today is a very Ooh. breezy day. Very windy. Might not have been the best day to do this. No, definitely don't want to breathe this stuff in. Helps if you moisten it, keep the dust down. Plus that uh, peat moss is gonna need some moisture anyways. When you first open it, being that it's compressed, it's gonna be hydrophobic, uh, which means basically it doesn't like to absorb the moisture. But as soon as you get it wet, tends to hold on to the moisture really well. All right, so, uh -huh. again, the ratio is five gallons compost, five gallons peat moss, in a five gallon bucket that is half vermiculite and half perlite. Now you don't have to add vermiculite. You can use straight perlite and vice versa. Uh, just helps with uh, water retention, soil or nutrient retention and makes it a little, a little bit more loamy. Not quite so heavy. So you get a little bit of aeration out of it. So your potatoes don't sit in water. Right, because potatoes do not like to have their feet wet. 
All right, so that was the mixture, and now he's going to stir it up. We've also uh, done this where we mix it on a tarp. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Uh, we don't have a video of it, but you just take a tarp, and you can do it in a bigger amount than what we're doing and uh put your ratio onto the tarp and then you just kind of move the tarp around you know kind of fold it this way and fold it that way and mix it up that works really well if you want to do a whole bunch at one time yeah a large batch <coughs> but since we're just filling those small little three gallon gallon buckets or pots uh we don't have to mix up quite a month right quite much. I think we've got 15 gallons, so that's enough for five pods for doing 20 pods. We can make this a little bit. Right. And again, try not to bring that stuff in. Yeah. We got the, our three items mixed up together. So next we're gonna add some nutrition for it. We use uh, about a cup of rock phosphate, half a cup bone meal, about a quarter, maybe a little less of dolomitic lime. Uh, we're gonna mix that all together so we can plant. <laughs> Okay, so we have six of our bags here. Uh, we like to add an organic fertilizer. This is just uh, Espoma's Garden Tone. I think it's like a five, six, three, a three, four, four on the NPK. I just go about a handful, add it to that bottom third, mix it in real good, plop our potato in, and then cover it up. get our potatoes from a big box store um, cost efficient you know four bucks and you get five seed potatoes um, we've also used the small ones from Aldi that we really like and uh, we do a blue a red and then the Kennebec, Kennebec. Uh, I used to be very want everything labeled so i knew what we were getting <laughs> well that kind of got destroyed last year when uh, one of the pups decided that the 
the minerals that we added in and the bone meal and that type of stuff smelled so good that not once but twice totally dumped all our potatoes out of these bags so this year i've decided it's just going to be roulette and uh <laughs> when we want some for dinner it'll be a surprise of what color we get that's right So again, he filled it one third full, added a little fertilizer, mixed that in, set the potatoes in with the eyes up or the chits, whichever you want to call it. And then he's just going to top off the bags. And this is how we've been doing it for about four years. It's worked really great for us. Exceptionally well. Um, I know, you know, as you whether you're a first time potato planter or you've been doing this um you'll see people do things many different ways there's not just one way to, you know to do it there's a thousand ways to skin a cat some just leave less fur <laughs> so so uh hopefully you know this maybe gives you an idea or some inspiration on uh, how you may want to do it. Yeah, so get out there and grow some taters. Yes. Again, you don't need a big in-ground plot to do this. You could do this on a balcony, on a small porch. Um, we can probably link these bags to you. We, we just get them from Amazon. We'll try and link them below for you. And you know, a lot of folks will tell you you got to hill taters and all that. You know, throw dirt to them. You know, if you're growing in them bags, especially bags as small as this, you put them at the one third mark, uh, just fill them up. If, if the taters start pushing out the top, throw some mulch on top of them, keep them from getting sun damage. Uh, but you don't have to add any extra cover up the leaves and all that other junk. Yeah, we, we've never done it and we've gotten high yields. So last year, our winner for yield amount was the blue. Yeah, the Adirondack blue. Yep. They did so. ex exceptionally well. All right, we're going to get these moved uh, into the Finston area so that our dogs uh, <laughs> don't eat them. <laughs> don't play with them this year. Yep. And then uh, we'll continue on with the rest of the bags. So we're trying something new this year. We've got these 20-gallon uh, buckets from Lowe's. They're like 8 bucks a pop. Uh, we use them normally for, like, our carrots. We grow our carrots in them. Uh, we're going to try to grow taters. So we've got some Yukon Golds, and we're putting three per pot. Again, the mix is the same. Uh, fertilizer, of course, I up to about a cup of fertilizer instead of just a handful. Uh, we're putting three of them in each, and we have three buckets. Now, these are not going to be kind of harvest when you want dinner. These are going to be let them go until they're done and then harvest them all at once because I'm not toting that big 20-gallon bucket full of soil and taters. Thank you for joining us in our garden today. Hope that you learned something as far as growing potatoes or maybe even just a new way to grow them. And uh, we'll be keeping you up to date as we show other things that are, are growing in our garden. So yeah, don't don't be afraid to experiment. Definitely. Yep. It never hurts to try. You're not losing anything. Till next time. Y'all keep growing even if it's something small. <laughs>